Today we're going to talk about the Braze Paradox, a counterintuitive phenomenon in traffic. Let's take a look at the roads in New York City. Specifically, let's focus on 42nd Street, a busy crosstown road that is site to the United Nations, Grand Central Terminal, and Times Square. On Earth Day in April 1990, New York City closed 42nd Street. The road closure was expected to cause a nightmare of gridlock and traffic jams. But nothing of the sort happened. Quite surprisingly, traffic flow in the city actually improved. That closing a road could improve traffic is remarkable. But it is not exclusive to New York. Researchers have identified the same principle for Boston if it closed parts of Main Street. And a similar improvement could be made in London by closing parts of the road that connects the borough and Farringdon Underground Station. And all this is just puzzling because usually extra roads are built to improve traffic. So why does the Braze Paradox happen? Let's do a simple example. Consider two towns A and B that are connected by roads. There's a northern set of roads and a southern set. Historically, each road takes a certain amount of time. The first road on the northern route always takes 20 minutes. The second road is different. Its travel time is t over 10 minutes, where t is the level of traffic. If there are 200 cars on the road, for instance, the travel time will be 20 minutes. But if there are only 100 cars, then the travel time will be 10 minutes. Just as we expect, less traffic corresponds to a shorter travel time and a faster trip. The southern route is the same except in reverse. Now the first road takes t over 10 minutes and the second road takes 20 minutes flat. Now imagine there are 200 cars driving from A to B. How long will it take to get from A to B? The answer will depend on traffic. Since the two routes are the same, it's easy to understand the equilibrium route that the drivers will split up evenly. This means there will be 100 drivers to each route. And we can substitute that for the level of traffic to find out that the roads with traffic end up taking 10 minutes apiece. Putting this all together, that means the total travel time from A to B is 30 minutes. This goes on for a while until city planners decide to make a change. One day they build an extra road that links the two routes at the midpoint. Now drivers can instantly switch from one route to another, just like a train can when switching from one track to another. The question is, how will this traffic be affected with the extra road? We consider the first choice of driving up to the midpoint. The northern path takes 20 minutes for sure. The southern path takes t over 10 minutes, and the time depends on the traffic level t which can be as little as zero cars or as much as 200 cars. What is the right choice? Well, the decision is fairly simple. In the worst case, all 200 drivers take the southern route, resulting in a travel time of 20 minutes. This is no worse than the northern route. And if fewer cars take the southern route, then it will be faster. So the southern route is always at least as fast, and therefore it's the right choice. At the halfway point, it's the same decision. One option is the southern route, which takes 20 minutes, and the other option is to switch to the northern route, which takes t over 10 minutes in total. Now by the same logic as before, the t over 10 road is going to at least be as fast, and therefore it's the right choice. 
This logic holds true for every driver, and therefore we can conclude that all 200 cars take the same route. This means that t will equal 200. We can substitute that value in and calculate that the roads that depend on traffic take 20 minutes each. Adding it all together, that means the travel time from A to B will be 40 minutes. Now let's compare the travel times before and after the new road. Before the new road, we calculated that it took 30 minutes to get from A to B as the driver split up evenly between the two routes. But after the new road, the drivers preferred to take the roads that depend on traffic. The net result was it takes 40 minutes to get from A to B, which is worse. So adding a new road has made the travel time worse for everyone and that, in a nutshell, is an example of the brace paradox. The new road has affected the decision of everyone, and this leads to a worse outcome for the group. The brace paradox can come up in many situations. In physics, it can affect how far a set of springs stretches under a constant force. In electricity transmission, it can affect the speed of power being delivered on the grid. The Braze Paradox has also been used in basketball to explain the Ewing Paradox, that the New York Knicks could have been a better scoring team when they benched their best player. The lesson in all of these examples is that flows on networks are complicated, and one should not blindly build roads or extra capacity to try and fix traffic. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. I make videos on math and game theory. You can also check me out at my blog, Mind Your Decisions, or on Twitter at Presh Talwalker. And you can check out my ebooks at Amazon.